Hey friends, my name is C and you're watching Yee Miss Easy. And welcome to the first study video for A level for the maths. And today we'll look into core pier one, chapter one, which is complex numbers. And we'll first look into 1.1 1 .1, imaginary and complex numbers, which is the rules and examples video. And we'll start off with imaginary numbers, but before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and bring the notification button to understand any future videos. And we'll look into imaginary numbers. So here we have the quadratic formula, and we use this to solve for quite like roots in quadratic equations, right? And this and uh, this square root here, it's always the square root of a positive number, like let's say root forty-five or root thirty-six, right? But here's a question: What if this right here is a root of a negative number? And this is where an imaginary number comes into play. So i is denoted as an imaginary unit, right? like so i. So like you can just write it as like i or like i, and basically i equals the square root of a negative one. So just let that sink in first. It's the square root of a negative number, and we didn't look into any square root of a negative number because it gets quite confusing in IGCSE. So in further maths, we look into the square root of a negative number. So let's say the root the square root of one is just one, right? One. And the square root of let's say four is just two. But the square root of negative one, as we mentioned, is equal to i. And the square root of negative four will be equal to two i, which we'll look into it later. So basically an imaginary number is of the form b i, where b is a, a real number, like let's say two, four, negative three, or any other numbers. For example, i 3i minus 2i or i pi or like pi i. And a complex number is of the form a plus bi, where a and b are both real numbers. For example, 1 plus 2i or 2 plus 3i root 3. And now we'll look into complex numbers. As mentioned before, a complex number is of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers, which this is what it's in, it denotes, like it's a set of real numbers. For example, these as mentioned. So here just be, you have like a set theory of all the numbers, like C stands for complex numbers. The symbol for complex numbers is like a C and this line right here. And here we have all real numbers and different um, notations. And as mentioned for the complex numbers right here, for the complex numbers A plus B I, the real number part, is like the real number, A is a real part and b is the imaginary part of the equation. And basically re and im just stands for real and imaginary, which we'll look more into it in chapter 2 for argon diagrams. So basically this right here, a complex number, is, is, uh, is made out of a, which is the real part, like any real numbers, like 3, 4, or whatever. And bi is the imaginary part where it has a real number, let's say 3, and then an uh, imaginary unit of i, like so. And we'll look into more notes for complex numbers. In a complex number, the real part and the imaginary part cannot be combined to form a single term. That means, that let's say 3, three plus 3i, three you cannot combine it to be 6 or like 6i. You can't because it's different parts of the complex numbers. And complex numbers can be added or subtracted by adding and subtracting the, the real parts and the imaginary parts separately. And you can multiply a real number by a complex number by multiplying out the brackets in the usual way. For example, like 3 times by 2 plus i, you will just expand the bracket to get 6 plus 3i. It's just normal way. So here we have a common like some common notations for the imaginary unit i. So it's number one. We can usually we can just write it as i root x or root x i. They're both acceptable, but we usually write it as the first one right here, because if we were to write it as root x i, like, so like root x i, sometimes we will get confused like the i with the square root thing, square root uh, the square root symbol. So it's we usually write it as i root x so that it's easy to differentiate. So number two, we we write it as i root two. We, all, we, we usually put the imaginary unit i before the radical symbol or the square root symbol. And three, we, we usually write it as xi instead of ix. 
So number four, when we have a whole number and the radical symbol or like a square root symbol, we usually write the whole number first like three, following with the imaginary unit three i, and only the radical symbol, as shown in part two. Then next we have the quadratic equations. So for a notation note, just as we tend to use x as a default real number variable and n for integers, we tend to use z as a default letter for complex numbers and complex equations. So for example, we have this z squared plus 25. In normal quadratic, we would do this x squared plus 25. But because we're dealing with a complex equation, we use z. So to solve for z, we would just do it normally, just do like move 25 to the other side to get z squared equals minus 25 and you would square root uh, minus 25 to get plus minus 5i. So the way to solve complex equations like z squared equals to, uh, root minus 25 is that z squared, we would do z squared equals minus 25 and z, that means this, uh, that means z equals root 25 root 25 and you can split root 20, uh, minus root 20, sorry, minus root 25 and you can split minus root 25 to minus 1 times minus root 25 like so, right? because if we were to use the third rule we can split the third and as we know, um, root of minus 1 is equal to i and root of 5 is equal to 5 so root of 25 is equal to 5 that means it's equal to 5i and just don't forget the plus minus sign because it's uh, you're squaring a number, so you'll get plus minus. And then for the second one, we have z squared plus 3z plus 5. So what we can do is that we can either do the complete inner square, like what I did here, or we can just use the quadratic formula to solve for the z or the variable. So in this case, I, I did complete inner square. So what I did was that I just used the standard complete inner square method to get this uh, expression right here and simplify to get z plus 3 over 2 squared equals minus 11 over 4. Then what I did next was that I just square it um, both sides to get uh, z plus 3, uh, 3 over 2 equals plus minus root 11 over 2i. Because we square, uh, I square rooted my minus 11 over 4, that means it would be equal to minus uh, root minus 1 times root, minus, uh, root 11 over 4. And as we know, root 1 is i, and root 11 is just root 11, so it will be root 11. And root 4 is 2. So it will be equal to this. And don't forget the plus minus. And therefore I just moved uh, 3 over 2 the, uh, to the other side to get minus 3 over 2 plus minus root 11 over 2i. And here's a quick note. If the discriminant of a quadratic equation is less than, is less than 0, then the equation has two distinct complex roots. Neither are real. And this is uh, because we have uh, the reason why we have two distinct complex roots is because complex roots come in complex conjugates, which we'll look into it later. But here's just a quick explanation. Basically, complex conjugate means that roots come in the plus minus pair. Like let's say we have three plus, like let's say three plus two i, as one of the roots for a quadratic equation or any other equations. That means another root must b3 minus 2i. And we can see this by if we use the quadratic uh, formula x equals minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Like so. If you were to square root a negative number from this part right here, you would end up with a plus minus like so. Or if you were to draw a graph, let's say if you have a um, Let's just rub this out. If we have a cubic graph or like a, like a quadratic graph, like so, let's say a quadratic graph right here. So a quadratic graph must have two roots, right? But in this case, none of the roots touch the the what the x-axis. That means there are two non-real roots, i.e., two complex roots. Or let's say a cubic graph. In this case, there are three real roots, which is normal, right? But in some cases, the cubic graph might look like this. So, there's only one real root. That means the two other roots are complex. That means they come in complex conjugates. Like so. And here we have some examples. So, number one, simplify root of minus 36. So, root of minus 36 will be, can be split into root, uh, root minus 1 
times root 36 and root 36 is just 6 right so it will be 6 and root minus 1 is i so it will be 6i like so and you can include the plus minus but it's not in an equation so we tend to not put it here and number 2 oops uh, yes the 6, 6i so number 2 simplify root uh, minus 7 so we can split into root, uh, root minus 7 can be split into root minus 1 times root 7 and root 7 is already a prime number because 7 is already a prime number so we can't just simplify it further so we'll leave it as root 7 and then uh, root minus 1 will be equal to i so it will just be i root 7 like so and lastly we have root minus 45 so root 45 can be split into two numbers right or actually you can split into three including the minus one so root minus 45 will be equal to minus one times root 45 and we know that root 45 can be split into two numbers if you were to simplify the third so root 45 can actually be split into three root five because it's basically root 9 times root 5 and 9 times 5 is 45 so I just simplify the 9 straight away so we have 3 root 5 which is already in its most basic form and uh, my root minus 1 is equal to i so it will be 3 root uh, 3 i root 5 or 3 root 5 i depending on how you write it and lastly we have some examples for simplifying some equation uh, some expressions so number one, we have to uh, simplify 2 plus 3i plus 4 plus i. So remember just now, we have to add uh, or subtract the imaginary and the real parts separately. So it will be 2 plus, oops, it will be 2 plus 3i plus 4 plus i. We can do it separately so that I can, so I can group it. So it will be 2 plus 4 plus 3i plus i. So 2 plus 4 is just 6 and 3i plus i is just 4i like so because what, uh, i is basically just 1i and basically just like adding numbers together and lastly we have simplified this right here so we have this i minus this equation right here this expression so we can just uh, you can just simplify this part here first so it will be i minus 3 times 2 minus i this will be equal to i minus, minus 3 times 2 is minus 6, and minus 3 times minus i is plus 3i. And therefore, if we were to simplify it, minus 6 will just remain at minus 6, and i plus 3i is plus 4i. So it will be minus 6 plus 4i, like so. And that's the final answer. And that's it for this first video for A level for the maths. But today we look into 1.1 for imaginary and complex numbers. And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And if you have any comments or questions or feedback about my channel or my YouTube or my Instagram, you can leave them down below and I'll reply to them. And check out my social media in the description, for example, YouTube or LinkedIn or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.yemisteasy.com. And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be 1.1 imaginary and complex numbers for the questions video. So that video will be all about questions for 1.1. But anyways, that's it for this video and I'll see you all in the next video. But until then, stay safe and happy learning. Mm -hmm.